Scoring is way more than just adding pretty decoration to your bread. It is absolutely key to making great bread. I'm going to tell you why scoring is key, but also, most importantly, share my secrets for making a great ear on your bread and for making scoring easy. I'm gonna show you three different ways to score your bread, how to get that great ear, how to make these leaf patterns, and a couple of other more interesting decorative ways. So we score our bread because as our bread expands, as it bakes, it will look for a weak point with which to break in order to fully expand. So we give the bread that breaking point. We add a cut so that it can expand in a uniform way. Now, what should you use to make those cuts? When I started baking a long time ago, I used to use like a steak knife. I really tried to do cuts with a steak knife and that was awful. It really, I just butchered my bread. So do yourself a favor and at least invest in a razor blade. You really do need a thin, super sharp blade to do proper scoring. Now, I went ahead and invested in a lom. It wasn't very expensive, but it's so much safer. You hold the handle, you're way away from that razor blade, and you can get a proper scoring job done. I wanna point out one quick thing. Um, usually, I don't put a lot of excess flour on my dough before I score. This is more indicative of how I usually do it. This one has a bit more flour than I usually put on, and that's just to make that decoration pop. Adding excess flour doesn't really help you score. I um, use bannetons that are well seasoned. I've been using these for years. I give it just like the lightest little dusting just to prevent sticking. I personally don't like the taste or the texture of raw flour when I'm biting into bread. So that's my personal preference. These four loaves are all from the same batch of dough, which was 30% whole grain, including rye, emmer and einkorn, which are all ancient grains with low gluten. I milled them in my Como countertop mill. I have a link to that and all my baking equipment in the description below, so check that out. I just want to mention, which is my first tip. When I do my sourdough, I do an overnight cold proof. That means um, after I've shaped them and put them into the banneton, I put them in the refrigerator overnight before I bake. Now, cold fermentation is great for developing flavor. It just slows the fermentation down and it gives you a long, gives the yeast longer time to develop the flavor inside your sourdough. So that's why I do it, but it has an added benefit. When I go to score a cold dough, it is infinitely easier. So think about employing that technique. If you're struggling with scoring your bread, it will just give you a firmer surface to score. Just for you guys, I ended up uh, taking two of these breads uh, out of the refrigerator about four hours before I baked them, just so the dough was a little bit warmer and you could see the difference uh, between a cold dough and a warmer dough. Now you can see that the warmer dough is a little more slack. It's probably a touch more proof too, because it's been sitting in a warmer environment which speeds up fermentation. If you're having trouble with your blade getting caught in your dough, like it stutters along as you make your cut, then that might be a sign that you're overproofing your bread. Overproof dough is harder to score. It's puffy and shrinks back when you cut it with a blade. To get a great ear, you want to cut off center from the dough and at an angle. This is key. Imagine that you want to create a flap of dough rather than merely a cut. Notice I'm using the corner of the blade at an angle and I'm cutting straight back toward me in one continuous stroke. This cut is the important one for directing the expansion of your bread. If you don't think it's quite deep enough, you can score it lightly again. 
Now I'll show you how to do a pretty leaf pattern on the side here. You're making a row of leaves along an imagined stem, and then a mirror image. The key is quick, light strokes. Let's see it once more, but this time in slow motion. I'll add extra flour to this one just so you can really see the pattern after it's baked. Now, with these two loaves, I'll show you two different alternative patterns. We're going to make two smaller ears on this one with two diagonal slashes. And for this last one, I'm going to make a center cut with leaves on each side. This is mostly to show you what happens when you don't hold the blade at an angle. I'm going to hold the blade more or less vertically, and that means I'm not going to get much of an ear. Then I'll make leaves down the side. Think of the center cut as the stem. Make a row of leaves on one side and a row of leaves on the other. So here's the finished bread. Um, you can see that we got beautiful ears from that technique of angling our um, blade. Um, some beautiful leaf patterns here. Uh, this was the center cut one. I didn't expect to get much of any ear, but I still kind of angled that blade just slightly when I did the cut. It's um, because it's a curved blade, it sort of naturally does that. Um, so we have a nice little ear and our cuts along the side. And then this is our two diagonal cuts, which also developed some pretty ears like that. Nice rustic looking um, bread. So I have one more tip for you. And this really revolutionized the way that I scored my bread. Attitude, <laughs> I'm serious. When you approach your scoring with confidence, it makes all the difference. Once I just like got in my head, I can do this. I am going to hold this and use this confidently. Your cuts will get stronger, quicker. You won't stutter across the surface of your bread, which I remember doing earlier when I was more timid and felt like I didn't know what I was doing. So really, it might sound corny, but I'm serious. Believe in yourself. Believe in your bread making skills. You'll see it will make a world of difference. Now I have a whole sourdough playlist. Go check that out, including a full advanced tutorial that takes you from start to finish of how I make my sourdough bread. Um, go check that out. I have one battle of the ancient grains where I compared cooking with uh, emmer and einkorn and kamut. I have recipes on what to do with your sourdough discard. So check that out. I'll meet you back here soon. Thanks, lovely people.